Welcome to Electron Online. And now let's talk about Einstein and his contributions to our understanding of energy and the fact that energy was quantized. Five years earlier, because this is in 1905, so five years earlier, Planck had postulated that energy was quantized because it was, it was delivered or the source of energy was in number of oscillators. Each oscillator uh, vibrating at a particular frequency and thus putting out quantized chunks of energy called photons and that each quantized chunks of energy would have the energy equal to some constant now known as Planck's constant H times the frequency of that oscillator. So Einstein wanted to prove that. He wanted to prove that energy was indeed quantized and in 1905 he managed to do so. He took a cathode ray tube, he illuminated the cathode which had negative charges on it so it was it had a battery that pushed negative charges onto the cathode and it would illuminate that with light, light that could vary both in frequency and intensity. So when he turned down the frequency to a low frequency, he decided, or he was able to measure, in the side, but of course able to measure, that there was no current. When he increased the frequency to a high frequency, then he was able to measure current. So he realized that low frequency produced no current, high frequency did produce a current, so there was something about setting these electrons free and that was then done by the light shining onto the cathode. Now, doing the experiment a little bit further, he realized when the frequency was low, it didn't matter if the intensity of the light was low or the intensity of the light was high. In either case, no current was seen. So here we realize that if you shine a light on a cathode and you continue to shine light on it so that energy would be deposited, it was assumed that if energy was continuous, that as energy was collected over time, enough energy would be produced to set electrons free and to start a current. But no matter how long the energy was emitted from the light, and no matter how high the intensity of the light was, you could make it really intense, no current was produced. So it turned out that only current could be produced if the frequency of the energy, the frequency of light, was high enough because it required a certain amount of frequency or a certain amount of energy per unit energy chunk or photon to set the electrons free so that the current could fly across the gap from the cathode to the anode and current could then be measured on a current meter. So it turned out that in order to set the electron free, each electron had to receive a single photon with enough energy to set it free. A continuous stream of energy, when the frequency wasn't high enough, could not be accepted by the electrons in order to set them free from the cathode and produce a current. So this proved in 1905 that energy was indeed quantized, that the energy was equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, where Planck's constant was equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules, and for that, in 1921, Einstein received the Nobel Prize. It was a monumental, not discovery, because in, in 1900, Planck already had discovered that that was true, but it was done mathematically. There was no real proof that that was the case. Einstein, in 1905, was able to prove that energy was quantized, and for that, he received the Nobel Prize. Notice again that the concept was that the energy was somehow proportional to the frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the energy, which is what this experiment was based upon. To figure out, to make that into an equation, we had to come up with a constant, and the constant was finally decided to be this number right here. And for the work that Planck did on this particular area of physics, he was given the honor by naming that constant after Planck, after himself. So this is now known as Planck's constant, who was really the person who was able to mathematically describe a black body radiation curve and how the energy coming out of a black body had to be quantized, assuming that it was a number of oscillators producing the energy. Einstein came down along five years later and says, I know how to prove this. Here I can show you that if the energy coming out of the light does not have a high enough frequency, no current will flow regardless as to the amount of energy deposited onto the cathode, but if the frequency is just high enough, even at a low intensity light, high enough frequency would produce a current, therefore proving that energy had to be quantized. Quite a discovery, and again, aiding in our understanding of quantum mechanics.